Hi, welcome to four spectacular steps to coloring your webcomic. I'm Scott Wright and I do teamspectacular.com. So I do four quick step, four quick layers. I do a background layer, an ink layer, a shadow layer, and effects layer, which you're seeing right now, or mood, as I'm gonna call it. So basically I select the panel that I'm gonna draw from, select a color, this mood, I'm gonna do a darkish blue, because uh, it's a night scene and it's kind of a somber, sad moment. So now I take a square bra square sponge, this is where I create the texture. I think this is where it confuses lots of people, or people are interested in my technique, because I, I love these sponges. I got it from watching a lot of the uh, Flint Flintstone cartoons as a kid. I love how they create texture with the sponges. So I use... I'll take the solid color I use, like the dark blue, and I'll lower it. Like, so I keep this, you just change the value, but kind of the same color. And then I'll use a round sponge to help add some more texture from the square. I love the square one. To, I use the square brush a lot when, or sponge a lot when uh, I'm doing like, you know, harsher, darker moments. And then the round one when it's softer, kind of, you know, more happy moments. So now with my character color, so I don't use, I don't close my ink lines very well, so I have to go through and I color each section by hand without using the fill tool. Now I'm grabbing colors from one of the first comics of this storyline, like the, just so I can keep it consistent. I like to go back to uh, the first two panels or first two stories that I've done and kind of steal the colors from there, so it's all consistent through the, the storyline. So I don't really worry too much about uh, going over the lines and stuff within like the outline of the character. I kind of make sure I don't go out of the lines, but inside I kind of do it from back to front. So I grab the colors I feel like are behind and I start coloring over that. And then I'll take the next color and go over top of that one and over and over and over. Now I use little sponges here to blur things once in a while from the black, white to black and do the hair. No, uh, won't worry with everything, so I'll just skip ahead a little bit to the shadow layer. But so shadows, so you can see my finished product here. But so basically, how I do it is uh, I grab. So this is what I came up with with my color. So I'll turn that off. I, I like to turn it off, even though I've already done it. I don't know why. It's just <laughs> it makes me feel like I've accomplished something when I can <laughs> finish the shadow and just press one button and see everything together. So in this case, I'm going to use a light brown for the shadows. So I just go over everything in one solid swoop, trying to create mood with the shadows. And then, and then I'll go over with a little bit of white to highlight, create highlights and a little more depth to my drawing. So, and then my trick here is I use a sponge, I use the round sponge actually, and I use I, I up the opacity to more to the 70s, the 80 percent, and then I'll take round sections and I'll blur it in. And I'll do backgrounds too the same way. So, And then is the next trick is like you'll see that uh, it's just a regular normal level right now. But I'll take that shadow level that I just created and I'll turn it to a uh, shadow mask, which now uh, basically blends it or multiplies or even kind of a cell of, uh, of, uh, of an overlay. So basically what I just colored, the brown I just colored becomes a shadow and the white that was on that is invisible so it brings through the, the background color. So I'll play around with the background a little bit and the sky. I use the brush or the, the, the scratch board tool for the solid colors and all my colors and shadows and stuff and then Make sure I do sponges to blur out little sections here and there to create some more wraparound sections and I feel like it adds a little texture too. So now, here's my other, my next step is th is to create mood. I also call it effects quite a lot is that uh, and I'll use a shadow mask. See that's the color I use, it's just the same as the shadow that I did for the character. But now I'm using it to go over top of everything. So I'm using a square brush this time because it's kind of a, I feel like it's a harsh moment, it's a sad moment. So I like the edginess of this square brush. I'll go through and go over his face a little bit with a round brush and lighten it up. So you can still see it, but there's leaving a little bit more, 
of that texture that the brush or the sponge can create. So that's basically it. So I'll just touch up little bits here and there, and that's it. I'm done. There you go. TeamSpectacular.com. Go visit. Tell your friends. Thanks.